Today we are covering alt text and accessibility. What is alt text? You all said you knew what it is, so we know it's an abbreviation of alternative text. Um, and so it's the written copy that appears in place of an image on a web page. And so um, the 2019 WebA Million Analysis found that missing alt text was the second most common accessibility failing. So it's really important we make sure we have alt text and it's got three main uses. The first one is to enhance accessibility for users of screen readers. The second one is in place of an image if an image file can't be loaded or isn't wanted. Um, so we've got an example there of what you might see as alt text. So that was an example Matt took from a university web page. Um, and so you can see there um, we've got some examples showing um, what you have. So that top one, we've got that description there. It's an exterior shot of an academic building with trees and grass on a sunny day. So you see that that's that's the description of what is in that image. So and alt text is also used for search engine crawlers. So for search engine optimization, so you can image index an image properly. So we're really focused on the first use of alt text today, but the other two are also important. And in our last uh, presentation, we talked about we introduced web content accessibility guidelines. So we wanted to cover what those talk about in terms of alternative text. And at the A level, and this is one of the first criterions, um, all non-text content has to have a text alternative that serves the equivalent purpose, except for what you see on the right. But those items that you see on the right, apart from decoration, formatting, and invisible images, um, those all still have to have an accessible alternative. And just to give an example of one of those, controls and input, there it's saying that we have to have uh, has to have a name that describes its purpose. And I was looking for an example that everyone will know. There's the search icon uh, to initiate a search in SUST. And when we look at the code, we can see that it has, there's no actual text there, but it has a title, University Search. And because it's been implemented as a background CSS image, there's no way to add alternate text uh, for background images. In fact, the recommendation is that for repeated decorative images on a web page, use them, use CSS background images to implement those. But that's just an example. But for all of the others and for much more, we've got lots more resources for developers at the end of the slide deck. And if you're thinking, can you avoid using alternate text? You can if the image is uh, decorative. So if it gives no purpose, uh, you wouldn't miss it if it wasn't there uh, effectively. Then in Office, you can mark it as decorative. And in HTML, you can put Alt and then two inverted commas uh, together because you have to show that you've considered it. You have to have something. You can't just leave nothing there. You've got to um, put that in, uh, or at least to show that you have, you've thought about it and you've decided it is decorative. Okay. so. When we're thinking about writing alt text, there's quite a lot of different things that we need to consider. And there's, there's sort of a spectrum. We have items that have no alt text, which is not good practice. And then in the middle, you've got alt text. So you've got something written or it's been marked as decorative. And then at the other end, we've got appropriate alt text. And that's where we want to make sure that we're moving to. So we can't have nothing, but there's also not good alt text and good alt text. And we want to think about how we can make that as appropriate as possible. So there are various strategies. And, and one of the things you might want to ask yourself is if you can't use an image, what text would you put in its place? And so you could think of if you were describing the image over the phone to somebody, what would you say? Another analogy that I was thinking of is if you were Growing up at a certain time, you might have seen this TV show, Nightmare, where the contestants were describing to the person that you could see at the front of this image wearing the helmet, uh, and they're not able to see anything, and you were describing to them what was going on in the room that they were in. Or maybe you might have played a text adventure where they wouldn't have had any of those images, but they had descriptions to give you enough information to know where you were in the game to be able to play it 
effectively. Okay, so another tip about writing alt text is thinking about the details that you need to mention for someone who isn't looking at it. And so there's all sorts of things that you want to consider there. But what is the purpose of that image? What do you want to include? So what details are important in the image? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a graph and we're going to be talking about the captions and the alternative text. So a caption gives a general idea about what the image is about but doesn't describe it in detail and it might also include a attribution or a title whereas the alternative text will describe exactly what can be seen in an image that's going to be relevant and so in our activity we're going to ask you to come up with a caption for the graph and to write some alternate text for the graph and we're not giving you any context, so that's why we're saying using your creativity, think what it might be. So there's not necessarily a right or a wrong answer. It does depend on what contextual information is mm. around something and how much detail from that image is required. Um, so we've got that reminder there, captions are giving you the general idea of the graph and we said you know you could be as creative as you wanted to be here um, so that's an example of a caption number of deaths per thousand of flu in Southampton in 1918 so that's what it could be about and giving you just a, a couple of examples of what captions might be where we're not saying anything about what's happening in that it's just more of a title so another one there average cost in in thousand pounds of a family home in cornwall in 1975 and so that's you know it doesn't tell you that the cost is increasing month on month in that year it's just telling you what it's about in general um so matt did you want to carry on with the next one Yep, so where we we're talking about the alternate text, here is an example that uh, it was a graph with the months along the of the year along one axis and along the other axis that we had the, um, uh, or that we could say that the, uh, the figures going from 16 to 19 in increments of 0.5 are along the other, the axis, the y axis and that the line starts just above 16 in January to almost 19 in December and there's a particularly steep increase in uh, around June and, and October. I noticed that in some of the comments that you put in you were saying that it looks like a cumulative graph which I thought was uh, really good as well. Um, so, any... so how much can you include in your alt text? Well it's not covered by the WCAG guidelines so we're really guided by um, software and where alt text that might appear. So for search engine optimization, Google counts a maximum of 60 <laughs> words, which is approximately 125 characters, so not very much. Um, but you should use as much text as is necessary to be effective. And so this can be quite tricky. That's it. And we found a very interesting paper from Abigail Stangle, who was uh, working for Microsoft, saying that uh, People who want to ha know the image descriptions, they rely on the, they, they want to know different content in that description, depending on the context that the image is being used. And you might have seen in some uh, content management systems that the alt text for the image is set and it will appear the same in whatever article it is. But if we were to look at um, this image, for example, uh, this is uh, Mudupe Kadri, who's a Nigerian executive director and a chief financial officer, who's, which is an image that I just picked uh, as an example. The, imagine how our alt text might change if we were writing an article about business news. Then we might say his name and that he's in an office and so on. Or in a dating profile, we might want to describe the image differently. Or if we were writing about the new chair of an equality forum, there it is important if the re or if the person viewing the alt text uh, is it important for them to know the ethnicity of the person, particularly if the context is an equality forum. So we're going to do another exercise where we're going to look at um, this picture in different contexts and to try to. 
uh, kind of vary it up a bit. We've got um, different contexts for different groups to start with, but you can continue to other ones. So we're going to be looking at if this picture was being used in an article about building 32 or for group two to start with, is it a, an article about changes to the operation of traffic lights or for group three, the dangers of crossing the streets when it might not be safe to do so or about the benefits of tree lined avenues. So we're thinking about the importance of emotion and we've got a quotation here from Leonie Watson from the Worldwide Web Consortium Advisory Board where she said a good alt text can conjure up wonderfully stimulating mental images. A friendly smile is the same in print, photo or wax crayon. Whether you listen to an image or see it, the emotional response is the key factor. And so we want to think about why somebody has included that. And, and so I've got an example here from Sassy Wyatt, who is a, a British blogger, and she blogs about her experiences as a visually impaired person. And it's quite a long quotation, but if you were to close your eyes or become visually impaired or blind and someone was describing a picture to you, it's likely that you would want as much description as you could possibly ask for. It may take longer to write the alt text descriptions, but it makes such a difference to people like me who are visually impaired and use screen readers. And so that's a, an image there of Sassy on the right, and this is what she would include as the alt text for it. Sitting at a wooden bench style table, Sassy and Grant both smile towards the camera. In between them, with Grant's arm around her, Ida has her front paws up on the bench with her nose straining towards the top of the table. In the background, through the clear plastic of the gazebo style covering, the blue water of the river dart is visible with small boats upon it. And so it's quite a poetic description of that image, whereas somebody else could have said a blonde haired woman sitting next to a man with a black dog between them. And it's not such an evocative description. And so it depends on what somebody is writing for. But she feels it's important to include those personal experiences and to have some details so that somebody feels connected to that image. And it was interesting, Matt and I had a discussion about this and, and he had assumed it was an American blogger until she'd said that it's it's the river dart. And then it was sort of you know giving it a geographical location, which then can help you to have more or less of a connection with an image. And a few other strategies that we we're thinking of were which these aren't necessarily right or wrong, but it's just things to, con to think about whether we should describe what's in the foreground of the image first or describe the most important part of the image or whether we should ignore elements which have been blurred due to, for example, a depth of field effect. And perhaps if we were describing a, a graph, then we might refer to a data table. And if you're in the full slide deck, we've got lots of different examples for like, different uh, like complex images or maps and how you might deal with those. Uh, so what we're going to look at next is the final breakout exercise where we've prepared lots of images which you can pick uh, whichever you want to have a go at. There are some that are relevant to the university, some more widely relevant, some are kind of a bit of fun or a challenge and the idea is to write some alternative text and I've provided what the context that that image is being used in actually is. Oh, you might have also noticed one of the images was a meme and in hidden in the slide deck I've got a, a, a couple of slides about writing alt text for memes as well. Shall we move on towards our conclusion? Yeah. So let's see. Ah yes. So how about how do you check for images? So a quick demo. There's a very cool bookmarklet that you can get called Totally and it, once you've dragged it into your bookmarks bar you can click on little sunglasses here and while there's lots of um 
content and, and features here. There's a screen reader wand, which is here. And then as you uh, hover over something, it shows you what a screen reader would say. So there, there's some alt text. Whereas on this example page where there is no alt text, you can see it says no text visible. And I'll just go back to my slides. Another fantastic tool that I keep on going on about, Accessibility Insights. I really recommend installing it and then just trying it out, particularly on university services. So it's an extension and you have an option to do a fast pass. And when I do that fast pass, it's telling me that it's found one accessibility error, which is missing image or text, and it highlights where that is. And whenever someone asks me to check something now, it's one of the first things I do. It doesn't pick up everything, but it picks up a lot. And you could also got the accessibility checker in Office, and it can point out where there is missing alternative text. And also it warns you about suggested alternative text. Like this is a fairly famous uh, image from last year about the graduate of 2020. This was during COVID and the Black Lives Matter protests when there was lots of those uh, those things, uh, the flares and stuff, I suppose they're called, smoke things. And, and it's saying, oh, it's a picture containing a person, water sports and swimming, which is, is quite a nice, quite a good job, but it doesn't capture the emotion <laughs> of that image. And um, I now hand over to Tamsin. Yeah, so another thing to be aware of is most alt text isn't spell checked. So you need to make sure that you're paying close attention to what you're writing in there because it's very easy for typos to creep in. Um, and please don't start alt text with picture of or image of because that's obvious because yeah, a screen reader will will let somebody know they've come to an image. But there is an exception of if it is a pencil sketch of or a painting of. So if I, you know, I'd included Mona Lisa, you wouldn't want to just say woman looking at camera or whatever. She's not looking at a camera. You would want to let <laughs> somebody know, you know, it, it's a painting. Um, that sounds great, Tamsin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that that's where the context is important that we need to know, you know, if, it, if it's a, a an article written for an art student, we need to know whether it's pastels, gouache, whatever that somebody might be using, what the medium is. But otherwise, you know, I don't need to say it's a photograph of Matt D. Prose. We can just say it's Matt D. Prose and then perhaps whatever contextual information might be needed. That's it. And a screen reader usually announces like image and then comes up with the image description as well. And there's some fantastic resources that can help you to make decisions about how to describe an image and the, the, these two decision trees. And of course, you've got these slides so you can uh, follow those links uh, if you want to have a look. But I recommend having a look. And if you really would like to practice, there's an uh, amazing tool called uh, the Poet Training Tool. I'm afraid I've forgotten what Poet stands for, but it will work you through a, a wizard explaining how to describe images and then it will get you to practice and uh, that actually I thought I knew about alternate text when I, I tried this out having finished these slides and it was still really hard so that's uh, quite useful to check out as well. Yeah so in conclusion at the start we all thought we had sort of average knowledge of alt text um hopefully actually you know more than that but there is an awful lot to consider um particularly in relation to the context and so to that end matt has has collated this lovely slide deck we've got over 140 slides of content so a lot more than we've covered today and i apologize that we have run over but hopefully it's given you a lot to think about and there are things that you you can now start putting into practice when you're adding alt text whether that's in word documents PowerPoints, web pages, or wherever else you might be using those images online.